All right, so I've been called on to do a little video about um, shamanism because I think maybe some people that are here aren't really fully connected to with, with how I interpret that word, so that might be quite interesting. And feel free to share your experiences with it if it means something to you or if you're interested or uncovering more things now at a soul level because much is going on for everyone and um oh sorry the energy is, is all up in me i'm really 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 tired at the minute so back in the day shamans were obviously in a whole different bunch of tribes and societies across the across the globe and according to i guess the purpose or the place or the vision of that particular tribe or whatever the shaman would have a specific role and they are essentially a service provider because the what they tap into um what the skill set that can be tapped into um and lots of us know if we've been to shamans um whether it's with plant medicine or for other practices just for breaking various spells or whatever is um oh, gosh this could go on for hours is that you are lending yourself to spirit essentially you're co-creating your you're receiving information that is not seen ahead of time behind time like you can see the the workings of somebody else's soul forward backward times not linear so um and people would enter the shamans would enter into a certain trance sometimes invoked by music and ceremony sometimes with plant medicine and very a variety of other things because i think how shamanism has, has sort of manifested or come to me because it's not like i'm a self-proclaimed shaman i don't need to be a shaman i don't need all these words but when your guides or these messages keep coming through and then you just realise, you start to read up and research. And that's why I did that Roots for Us class on Rainsticks article. Because I got called quite strangely to Jamaica, having sort of never decided to go there and without repeating the stuff that other people on the channel have been here for a while. Is um, I was just listening to a deeper calling from the earth, from the frequency of nature, from animals, from higher realms from the underworld from ancestors and they're all the steps that have led up to the here and now have included you know like an unbeknownst to me a quite an um well it was a trance like physical overwhelm overtaking like a spirit had entered me in ghana when i was at a place where i found out that they had potentially I say potentially because the fact I don't have facts but I do have local wisdom that one of the trees which was very ancient was cut down to build this new eco lodge uh, thing and shamans can enter into a trance and they connect and ch with the spirit realm so spirits or certain messages or they could be the I guess um some might say exorcists, modern day exorcists, some might say demon slayers, some might say, and it's all right if demon slayer doesn't mean anything to you or if it's from a film or fictional, that's all right. But demons do exist and it's very mindful that we have our mindset very tight right now because our patterns, our desires in the day can affect what energies we're working with and who we're calling into our physical space. And none of this is to be scared of anything, but it's just to be mindful that the physical realm is not the only realm that exists. And we are limiting ourselves and our potential in life because all of us have this spiritual skill set, being spirit beings. You know, just like a logistics skill set or an events or marketing, like these are skill sets I have in the physical realm as a human. I lived pre-spiritual awakening, which was magnified or catapulted. I was... I was sort of catapulted into it in 2020 when various things were going on on a planetary level that had never happened before and also on a physical realm. The way that manifested in the physical realm, we all know we're not going to go back in time and start talking about that shit again. 
So in terms of shaman, they tended to act independently, like solo, and in many places, Fiji or, um, you know, in Africa, the Sangoma, and um, in the uh, Mexico and lots of different places around the world, these kind of tribes would have a, a medicine woman or a shaman that would, I guess, help people find or help people rebalance recalibrate their spiritual health and their auric field and the energy that they hold within um their bodies the spiritual body the emotional body and the physical body um and having taken people into ceremony led ceremonies um in my own way connected a lot as well to sound my blueprint sound without repeating stuff for people i use uh, the singing bowls but um music that kind of frequency is part of how i work with people and this is oh god it sounds like it's a sales pitch this is nothing to do with that i'm just talking about how people interpret shamans these days because there's a lot of stuff going on right now and the purpose and the passion that people have for um, wanting to be a better person is really, really high and wanting to call ourselves healers or this, that and the other. But with these titles come a great responsibility and a lot of some of the work that can be done in this space. It's really not pretty. It's very, very dark. And you have to have gone, in my view, or how I'm seeing the realms, and these are just words, you know, I don't believe in physical manifestations of this, well, people, the spirit realm works through physical beings, but you have to go through hell to reach heaven. And so the angels, the fallen angels, or the people that have moved through their darkness, their calling, their awakenings in whatever um, role they need to play we need to play in the global awakening right now um and it's gonna pl oh, i was gonna say it's gonna play out how it's gonna play out is um is not to be considered lightly and with all of this stuff we do have to have fun we do have to have a joke you know we do have to have a, a play around because these are all vibrations that after going low we need to soar to recalibrate because the darker, the deeper we go, the higher, the lighter we can fly. And it's important that we don't stay in the lower realms. Very important. Lots of people, I would say, lost souls. So I'm not here to judge that lot because I work with the underworld. So it's just we've got to know that people can get lost in the lower realms. And... There's lots of ways, again, frequency to keep ourselves out of that. And that's why at the minute mindset is very, very important. Um, if, we get, if, if you are feeling generally good, but a little bit overwhelmed, like we need to start to listen to the calls of what we need to be doing to help our minds and bodies and souls right now. Because the ancestors are here to support the breaking of, of, of patterns in our lineage patterns in our families and and all of that is in aid of spiritual health it's getting everything cleansed everything aligned for better um for people who need to come together to do the new work or to create whatever we need to create wherever we need to create it it will help us find each other it will help us to come together it, it helps and I think it was a, I don't know if it's a laugh video or video before again to build that foundation because with knowing that I'm a shaman how I move into that work or not because right now as I said I'm a little bit disillusioned a little bit like not really into that whole spiritual wellness scene anymore because um it's got a massive shadow aspect and it's and there's a lot of tricksters and fakesters so with um, this type of work, you don't choose it. You don't choose it. And the awakening that I've had for the past three and a half years, like I, this was not on my vision board. <laughs> to become a shaman was not on my, in any of my 
physical realm, manifestations, whether I danced it under the moon, whether I wrote it down, whatever um, tool I, tools I have used to create the current reality that I'm living into, living and breathing life into. Being a shaman was not on that. There were other things around becoming a better version of yourself, da, 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 being in service of humanity because that's where I'm aligned. That's who I've always been, regardless of what other people's opinions of me around, whether you watch this for genuine curiosity or you just spy, don't matter. Um, I've always wanted, like as I said, growing up with my nan and all her mates and stuff, I loved it. I love being around my nan. I love being around the elders. Uh, um, I loved, I like to help people. I like to nurture and a lot of a lot of people are far, a lot of sensitives are, are, are realizing just how giving and, and nurturing they are and they desire to be because that's part of our purpose it's not the only purpose but it's part of our purpose it's part of our nature especially as the divine feminine you know that is that is the mother archetype you know we've all been mothers in previous lives and in future timelines like we've all we've all got that in us it's just whether we're laying dormant or not whether we activate it or not but having had a couple of days in the country and a couple of quite beautiful nature connections, horses, uh, birds, a death and a birth, um, nests, finding nests and um, spring lambs and protective mummers, it's like it started to come through to me that maybe I should talk a little bit about more my view on shamanism. Whether that happens long term or not, I don't know. But right here, right now, this is the video I'm, I'm been told to make. It is a bit jibber jabbery because my brain is not thinking of what I've got. Thousands of things going on in my head right now. So, and um, yeah, I just think. We have to think lightly about because words are very important and spells we can create or cast on ourselves and on other people. And um, until we all get to the point where nobody can cast spells on other people because we're too strong, like nothing that anyone says my way sticks, like it just gets batted back. So this is where our new discoveries of who we are in this new world um without resistance, with full surrender, because there is nothing we can do about what is currently happening. Ha happening? Happy? Happening. We can't do anything about it. We can only move through it and make it more comfortable or not for ourselves, you know. And, and that just comes from listening to the body temple, listening to the mind, finding joy, sleeping right, trying to be good to our body as much as can, we can, being play playful going back to the childlike but also the godlike self you know we are part of a an incredible energetic system in the non-visible non-physical um realms and i just trust that a lot of us are finding that connection and that magic much more deeply than we ever have and that we're not just pretending for the sake of wanting to look like we have a spiritual practice of like meditating three times a day and da, da, da. that's great as well but there is so much more to this spiritual this the us as spirit beings the discoveries are, are endless and because somebody else is showing us one version of how it's being done we don't know the full truths of that person. We don't know what goes on behind closed doors. So it's better that we start to master our own selves, start to look into things and words where we're being called Atlantis, Lemuria, you know, Avalon, whatever. And I'm sorry, disrespectful, I apologise. I don't mean Avalon, whatever. They're incredibly important parts of the collective memory right now that are rising because... People are talking to us from different realms, from different timelines. And so if we're not listening, we are missing the magic. They're guiding us because they've seen it all. They're passing the visions through the prophets and through the dreamers right now. And people don't believe this stuff. But if the dreamscape is not important, why does it happen? Why does it happen if it has no importance? 
Why do we dream? I think the Dalai Lama wrote some book about, yeah, I think I had that a while ago, dreaming, sleeping and something. But um, when he went to that run that conference, I can't remember where. See, I'm always good with visual stuff, like people's faces, but I'm never really good with names or remembering that kind of stuff. So anyway, dreams are clearly something that someone needs to be connecting with right now and writing them down. One of you likes having a recurring dream that's quite important. It's scaring you, but it doesn't need to scare you. OK, because we don't operate on a fear vibration, but this is somebody who's having a recurring dream. I don't know if it's every night, but it's definitely every week or every month at the minute. It could have been happening just in 2024. Oh, God, this is getting really particular. But anyway, I'll just carry on with the message. Um, and you're concerned that it keeps happening, but it's, it's nothing to be concerned about. It's just a, it's a message that you might want to look further into. Something about someone saying granddad or something about your granddad, but I don't know. Anyway, take that as you will or not. Um, but as shamans, you know, moving between the realms, like... <sighs> Maladoma Patrice you know, one of the sort of the great minds in shamanic history from, for, from my perspective, and I've learned a lot from his words spoken and, and written, um, you know, connecting with the dog on connecting with his tribe and connecting with the contemble, the spirit realm, the, 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 the spirits that he saw as a child that were then sort of battered out of him because he was, was, um, taken by the missionaries, given the Bible told that everything that he knew from a child was irrelevant. And that all of this magic, even when he disappeared into the forest, following this little rabbit down a hole, he saw a little man, like all of these lived experiences that existed in safe spaces. So the spirits feel safe to be seen by the eye because the eye was open to allowing these visions, these apparitions now people are so mistrusting of anything that's not in the physical that no one decides to present themselves. Fairies, gnomes, whatever. We oh, I keep saying whatever and they keep getting angry at me. Apologies. All different types of, and of, of, of um, elemental beings will present themselves to us however they need to if we are open to it, if we continually exist in a world where all we think about all the time is this physical body, the car that we drive or the bus we get on or the food, that we, and not ever beyond anything, out, then, well, one, this message isn't for you because you'll just think I'm a wacko, jacko, and that's cool. But for the other people that have started to question their belief systems... Because a belief system, and this is what happens in spiritual awakenings, when we go through this shit and the people around us like think we're weird or wacko or mental or however, because they've only known us in one light, according to the, the belief systems that we previously have been, you know, conversating, exchanging, sharing together. When we have awakenings, our the layers of the veil, start program, matrix, however we refer to it, start to get stripped back. We start to question things, you know, it's not an existential crisis. Having a, none of this has been a crisis for me. It's been an awakening. It's been really fucking tough, overwhelming, but amazing, beautiful, wouldn't change anything at all. So with the um, spirit realm being so powerful right now, but it's not just right now, it's all the time. Um, oh my God, so many of them want to come through now. It's really, really, really tough to try to speak. Please give me a second, sorry. Belief systems. When we start to collect, like question our belief systems of like, why, why is it that I have this belief? Why is it that I think that? Why is it that? And I'm not saying analyse everything and sit there stewing over stuff all day, every day. No. But fundamental questions will come in. It's like, why am I here? Why do I believe this? When we start to question that, we start to realise that, hmm, maybe I can start to play around or change my view or opinion on something because I don't know why I thought that before. 
And now we know we can change things or now we know we can move in a different direction. You know, when we don't know, we don't know. And me having lived for fuck knows how long with a big veil, big goggles over my third eye and my eyes. That's been removed and that is massively also connected to how I have challenged my own belief systems, my own behaviour, my own idiosyncrasies and and um it's a lot i know it's a lot i think someone's sort of it's finding it a lot at the minute but we could just take it a day at a time because anyone right now trying to plan or anything like times i'm always asking i'm like an elder at the minute what day is it what time is it i don't know because that doesn't it's actually irrelevant because i'm up when the sun's up i'm productive in my own way every single day towards a bigger vision that i've seen and so when we start to get the visions when we start to see and hear things uh, about things that maybe we've never had before that is curious to me i would like to follow that trail and not like down the rabbit hole kind of thing because well, maybe it is. Anyway, it's 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 a beautiful thing to have a curious mind and not to the point where we put ourselves in any form of danger. But when we open up, up, up portals and realms by doing psychedelics or when we're looking at our shadow self and we can connect with darker entities and energies because this is how energy works, we keep ourselves spiritually clean and cleansed and connected, but it will start to rock the ways, the beliefs that we view ourselves, we view people around us, we view the expectations of others, we view why we've done that in our life, we view why we believe that we need to be working Monday to Friday, nine to five. No judgment on anybody, but these are the beliefs, these are the things that you question, one questions, because, well, why not? Why are we doing something a certain way? I guess from anyone who's ha had any form of job and you do your analytical reports every month or whatever, you look back and you review what works and what doesn't work. And for me, clearly with everything that sort of slap bang crashed uh, at the end of 2020 was a wake up call to say, well, all right, it may not have been um, working for your highest good up until now. So this is a chance for you to look at all these different other angles and to resurrect something greater within because it's been dimmed because you thought you needed to be doing it one particular way when actually we can do anything. We can be anything as long as it's aligned with a pure heart and yes, money, practical world, great. But this is much more beyond that right now. You know what we're going through in this collective awakening right now. The frequency, frequency, is the only thing that exists. Money is a frequency. Everything, every form of exchange, is, it's a flow. And that's why the stagnancy around any type of behaviour or lifestyle is we've got to keep it moving. We have to keep it moving. Stagnancy and, and, and at the minute, you know, there is a lack of motivation. There is a heaviness that is making a lot of us feel lethargy and lethargic, tired, fatigued. Um, we can't blame ourselves, we have to allow it, but we've also got to keep on moving through with a vision towards something greater, something better. Especially if we're having dreams and hearing things, clairaudience, from our guys, from our answers, whoever we connect with, that there is something greater there. Because we've seen it, we've felt it, we've tasted it. So I don't know how long this is going to take to upload, I don't really do 23 minute long videos, but... I wrote the roots, grass clots and rain sticks on my blog as a way of moving through some very strange experiences because I was called to a place, because I was listening, I was listening to higher realms. I had no impulsive action to go. It was a very well thought out. I'm a very methodical, organised person. Because we have to be, because especially as a woman travelling on my own most of my life, you don't want to put yourself in a situation where, you know, shit can happen. So having all of these opportunities available to us now to listen to a call, the call, a higher message, uh, that one second, one minute, that one article that can change the direction, the trajectory, tra tra 
the trajectory of our life. So, I don't know, if someone feels called to read it, Roots, Grass, Cuts, Rain, Sticks, I go a little bit into depth, a bit more coherently, because a video for me is quite difficult when I'm trying to muddle through whatever's coming through at the minute in April 2024, which is intense. So for me, writing is a much clearer, and I had to write this article because it, it pulled everything out of me into a way that I can now compartmentalise that and have moved past that part in my life. Doesn't mean I have, don't ever refer to it anymore. But it does mean that that is now parked. Parked and I really, really loved writing it. Music was a massive part of it for me. Jamaica was a massive part of it for me. And it was about frequency. You know, I connected to past lives as an ancient scribe. I wrote that article as a scribe. I don't know. I didn't know that was going to happen. It was activated by being at the Calabash um, Literary Festival in Treasure Beach uh, in Jamaica in 2022, being around now, as I know, because I absorb energies, being around all these literary minds, it affected me, it changed me. And so the more of us sensitives know that the how, how, how much the environment around us impacts us, it's best that we put ourselves in good environments at the minute. It's best, it's best for us that we put ourselves in, in silent environments if we know there's too much going on. Slow down. Remove yourself from social situations just for a week, just for two weeks, just for the hermit archetype might be calling. Virgo. Anyway, um, that writing, for me, I, I would like to get back to sketching at the minute. It's coming through. You know, there's some things that are coming through. People might need to be connecting more with their hands, expression, self-expression, because... Age of Aquarius, you know, it's all about truth, you know, being who we be and expressing that to the world without fear of anything, because fear doesn't exist. It's just a mind. It's a construct that's been made up for um, their, the powers that be to control the people. But if we all one day decided to just like boycott this or do that, we'd, uh, we'd, we'd rule, right? you know, 2717. So... Roots, vast cuts and rain sticks. Yeah, it was a way of getting things out. And I think without some form of cathartic release every season of big events in our lives, books, dances, you know, it doesn't have to be a, a, an article or a blog or a song or a poem. But that now I, I now I understand much more like the, the great singers out there and how they've moved through relationships and how they've moved through political situations and decades and various things going on because of the lyrics that they, they work with and because of the visions that they've seen and because of the manifest manifestations that they have desired for their own lives, for their own people, for their own families, communities. And um, it's getting really, really long. So I just want to say, maybe scooch over to the website if if you are called to. But... um. Even if it's just the fae, the fairies calling you to play more with them. Just listen. The elements, you know, earth, water, fire, air, ether. Every day need to be in our conscious awareness. It is the greatest balance, the greatest supportive source of um, knowledge, wisdom that we can ever hope to connect with. And by not doing it, or delaying it, pushing that away, we're blocking our blessings. Nature calls us all in very, very individual ways. And our ancestors will also have very individual ways and languages of how, of, of how they communicate with us. Non-verbal, I'm talking about. So... Please um, go with it. Go with the flow. I know I am avoiding planning as much as possible, given that we do have to plan. So obviously get work, get things done in the ways that we need to. But the pace and the expectation around it is factoring in the notion that we are moving through a huge collective awakening. 
huge, huge solar flare influx, huge planetary shifts and movements. I don't have to know the exact planetary movements to know what is going on in my body or what is going on around me that I've never, ever witnessed in my 38 years on the planet. So, um, yeah. Full joy the knowledge, full joy the research, full joy the process of looking deeper into our own ancestry and a nomadic living and however we feel called because... Living simply, living abundantly is a vibration and it is attainable to everybody who lives with a pure heart. So anyway, I like that 30, uh, 3030 on the clock. 